Zephaniah chapter 3. Verse number 9. Would you please stand as the reading? Our time is fast, friend. Found Zephaniah chapter 3, verse number 9. I know we've seen it on the display, but have you found it in your own Bible? Yes. For reference purposes, always get it on. Help me tell your neighbor, say, Get it on. The Lord receive our seed and bless it in the name of Jesus. Amen. For then I will turn to the people a pure language. Are you there? Yes, sir. That they may all call upon the name of the Lord. To serve him with one consent. From beyond the rivers of Ethiopia, my suppliants, even the daughters of my despairs, shall bring my offering. Are you still there? Yes, sir. In that day shall thou not be ashamed for all thy doings. Wherein thou hast transgressed against me, for then I will take away out of the midst of thee them that rejoice in thy pride. And thou shalt no more be naughty because of my holy mountain. I will also live in thy midst of thee and afflicted and poor people. And they shall trust. The remnant of Israel shall not do iniquity, nor speak lies. Neither shall a deceitful tongue be found in their mouth, for they shall feed and lie down, and none shall make them afraid. Amen. Sing, O daughter of Zion, shout, O Israel, be glad and rejoice with all the heart, O daughters of Jerusalem. The Lord had taken away thy judgment. He had cast out thy enemy. The king of Israel, even the Lord is in the midst of thee. Thou shalt not see evil anymore. Amen. Amen. In that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, Fear thou not. And unto Zion, let thy hands be. All right, thank you. Let not thy hand be slack. And the Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. He will save. He will rejoice over thee with joy. Amen. He will rest in his love. Amen. He will joy over thee with singing. sorrowful for the solemn assembly who are of thee to whom the reproach of it was a burden behold at that time I will undo all that afflicts thee and I will save her the hot 
and gather her that was driven out and I will get them praise and fame in every land where they will have where they have been put to shame verse 20 everybody together verse 21 to go and at that time I will bring you again even in the time that I gather you for I will make you a name and a praise among all the earth when I turn back your captivity before your eyes say the Lord if you believe the reading of the word let me hear your loudest amen, amen. father your word is true let your word teach us. Amen. Let your word settle us. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Shout a louder amen three times and take your seat. Amen. 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 Let me start first by congratulating every one of us. And welcome you once again into the month of August. Hallelujah. Our month of new beginning with divine settlement. Amen. I'm beginning to emphasize the new beginning to tell you that whatever it was yesterday does no longer matter. Please take my word serious. If you accept it, it works for you. Whatever it was against you yesterday that worked against you yesterday has no grounds anymore against you Amen. i purposely allow you to go through that reading because if i just take one scripture it may not mean sense to you god acknowledge in that scripture all that you've been through many of us even though we are we are acting as though we have not contributed to anything that has held us bound as though God is so irresponsible it is time for us to own up and say to God I didn't do well too did you hear what I said many times we hold us we pass balls we pass balls we pass balls and became innocent but it's not a season to pass balls this is a season to take responsibility of whatever that is not in order in our lives the first step to come out of anything is to take responsibility did you hear what I said because anytime you keep taking or passing ball or blaming people the people you are blaming also have something they know you have done wrong and you will continue in a circle that may not be broken but today we break every circle of delay every circle of affliction every circle of, of, of worries every circle of pain every circle of disappointment that have been existing henceforth in your life it shall not go with you in the name of Jesus Amen I didn't hear amen from some pious Amen it's like this amen is becoming a good for me life is full of obstacles being a child of God does not exempt you from problem did you hear what I said yes sir in fact I believe many of us have been so spoiled by some erroneous preachings and teachings that we get that because you are a child of God all becomes okay they are false in fact tests is a proof that you attended a class all these Sunday services you come to sit down and somebody will be talking and teaching go 
God will hold you accountable. Did you hear what I said? Okay. Every Sunday service you sit down and God will put a word in someone's mouth to teach you. God will hold you accountable. Yes, sir. What do you mean, Papa? He said, my word will not fall on empty ground. It will not come forth without achieving a purpose. And how will God know that the word has totally fallen in a better ground? Is to test the ground. The test of a good ground is a seed planted on it. Sir. If you don't want tests, don't pray for promotion. Even Jesus was tested. Yes, sir. Before he embarked the name above every other name, it was not a free for all. He didn't get it for being a son of God. End it. May laziness not blind our focus in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. I've never seen any good student that is at ease when the exam is coming. No, he will study. He will do all he needed to do to pass the test. As for divine settlement, they that have endured till the end <laughs> has every right for settlement. You didn't hear what I said. Yes, sir. No, this doesn't sound like you what you want. Oh, settle me. Oh, settle me. And then God said, All right, I'm ready to settle you. Prove to me that when I put you in that chair, you will not be like them. And then test comes. One thing about God is this He will not test you with what He has not given you capability to handle He said my burden is light I said my yoke is easy We can be well entertained Your faith and your walk works together for divine settlement. Your faith and the action you take to back your faith works together. If you don't have an action to back your faith, you are like saying, I believe but I can't. Someone lift your hands. Say Lord. Lord. I will be divinely settled. I will, I will be, be divinely, divinely settled. settled. Amen. 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 How much of God do you know? Not Daniel chapter 11, verse 26, isn't it? Verse 32, I mean. Daniel 11, 32. The Bible said, They that do wickedly, such as do wickedly, against the covenant shall be, shall he corrupt by what? By flatteries. You know, most times we leave this part of the scripture. We know the B, but we don't consider this A. I want to open your eyes. Meaning flatteries is a way to destroy a man. Flatteries is to tell you what you don't have and make you feel you have it. 
when you're flattered you go by that expression thinking you are qualified and then when you now go to where it matters you realize you are empty how many of you know it's more disgraceful than enough and that's what the world wants hey you're fine oh. this is your dress fit you the person knows they no fit you he said, Chai. He said, Really? Oh my God. Yes. And then you wear it and get to where it matters. And people are avoiding you. Has the person done you well? What's up? Bible said, They that do wickedly, that do wickedly. Against the covenant. What's the covenant? The word of God. Shall he corrupt by flattering? Tell them what they want to hear and corrupt them and make them feel they have arrived. Make them live in falsehood. You cannot be settled when you are living in a falsehood that's where I want to start this meeting there are requirements that will make you to be divinely settled one of them is that you must be sincere you must know the truth the Bible says you know the truth and the truth will do, then do what set you free then the people they said bet so that means the scripture was talking about two categories of people disobedient ones and obedient ones you cannot be divinely settled when you are not walking in obedience it doesn't matter what you do in fact as a matter of fact the Lord asked me this morning as I was praying he said to them to raise men unto me and don't raise discipleship unto themselves. I don't know what that means. He said to them. Did you hear me? Let me be sure you heard what I said first. What did I say? Said to them. You see, just one thing I said, it has three tongues. In two minutes, said to them, Do not raise disciples unto yourself, raise men unto me. Now, it is not, not just one language, he said, Or else I take your means from you. Something is wrong. Oh. Remember how we started this yesterday? It started by one and two. Do you remember? He said, Do not rest disciples unto yourself. He said, Raise men unto me, or else I take your means from your midst. If you follow the scripture we read first, you will understand he was on that line also he was coming. As good as divine settlement is, if we don't get it right, we will only make noise and there will be no testimony. It's a bad, somebody shout bad. bad. They that do know their God shall be strong and do a lot. Why being strong? What does strength got to do with this whole thing? Strength is not a physical strength. Although it's added but it's a mental one 
ability to persevere ability to stand strong ability to wait patiently ability to make a covenant with God and set his principle and stand by it in these days and now people have said I'm not going to do something but in just a little push of what they wanted they are flattered they flaw they compromise forgetting their covenant with God that's not divine settlement when you buy your way it's not divine settlement it's mago mago settlement when you get it at all costs it's not divine settlement God does not endorse what he doesn't start if it's not the alpha of it he will not be the omega of it may you not be deceived by the flatterings of words amen it's a day that do know their God will be strong strong in a time when things are not the way you should be and you are strong and say I look up to him from whence cometh my help my help comes from the Lord I know the God whom I serve even if he do not even help me I will not be moved I was I've been opportuned by the virtue of my office seen people get angry on God real angry on God because they wanted what they wanted didn't happen and I've watched them get angry and got them and got back to themselves <laughs> you were angry and your anger didn't help you advance cause then what is the need? Please sit down, please. What then is the need? Amen. Amen. To be strong is when the tides is not working in favor. And you're still standing. That's the strength. To be strong is when you look around. We saw it in Malachi chapter 3 verse 18. How many of you are here with me? When those that do wickedly seem to be raised. When the less qualified is being qualified. Less qualified is being qualified, and the qualified is disqualified. When it is not what you know, but who you know, when the failure to yield and share your body on the adulterous bed disqualifies you over what you know but you're strong still say I still trust him when you refuse to do like them divine settlement is not when you compromise your faith and have your way it's not divine settlement don't be deceived Yagada Bradaba Yeke de Gada Gada. Hi, Jesus. Thank you. Stand up. If you're here, you know I 
now say something. When you are standing and the water is coming, it's coming, you are almost overwhelmed, and yet you didn't see help anywhere. And there are people saying to you, Come over, we will help you, just do what we want you to do. And you still say, I will not do what you want me to do, I'd rather die here. hear me? He's still God of the 11th hour. When it looks as if the water is about to overwhelm you, it's still the God that shows divine settlement. I'm going to come in the second service. I will teach you some things. Hear me? You need to be strong. Strong in faith. To be strong is when your colleagues, your age mates, seem to have your way. And you can't have your way. Just because you say, I believe. No one like you, Jesus. No one like you. 